And uh, this is an intro to something that we will re really only uh, skim the surface of, but um, it's a good point to, to introduce a, a bit of a physics that we didn't cover in module two. And you do need to know a little bit about to at least uh, understand the language that we use in describing stellar dynamics and things we observe in astronomy. And that's uh, nuclear physics. So the next uh, set of slides are what I call um, nuclear physics primer, where I'm trying to cover just the uh, basic things that um, that you need you need to know to um, to be able to place what we talk about in the context of um, stellar dynamics into um, the, the, the vocabulary and the uh, things that you have heard about. Uh, I think some of these are uh, things that uh, hopefully you feel familiar enough with, um, like electrons and protons. Uh, maybe even neutrons, they make up normal matter, they make up the atoms, molecules, and uh, they are held together by electromagnetic forces. I uh, hope all these uh, things sound somewhat familiar from your just, you know, just being a person who was, uh, who grew up and was educated in a modern uh, society. Um, you've heard of something about electromagnetism that more than any Greek philosopher would have known just because you know you're a modern person not someone who lived two three thousand years ago um, and there are some things that uh, you might not have heard about before neutrino is actually a big one and that uh, um, that has a fair bit of significance in, both in nuclear physics in general and also in the uh, stellar uh, or astronomical observations and nuclear forces are really what's involved when we talk about uh, when we talk about the energy released in the sun. Um, so the primer covers quite a bit. I guess I need to flip through to see if there's something that I need to emphasize. Um, yeah, this is the structure of the atom. Um, and uh, I want to come back to this in a little bit. But what I want to highlight here is that uh, if you get into um, uh, uh, the particle physics, uh, there are quite a few fundamental particles that uh, I'm really trying hard to not to spend too much time on here. Um, so neutrinos is one that you have to know. And with the introduction of neutrinos, there's a new categories of particles called leptons and hadrons. Leptons uh, include, electron is an example of lepton. And it turns out there are two other charged leptons, muon and the tau lepton are those two other ones. And they're associated with neutrino, turns out to be important in the context of um, the stellar model. That's why I wanted to highlight this. Now, if you are interested in this somehow, I think I didn't link to it because uh, I didn't want people to be whole sidetracked, but for people who may be interested, um, the term that you can search for that'll give you a lot of information is a standard model of particle physics. And it's a um, it's kind of summary of everything we know about uh, it, all the current knowledge of um, uh, the elementary particles. And uh, if you want a kind of accessible summary, you can look for a poster. <laughs> and there's a, a really good poster that's uh, produced by, I think, uh, what's the group's name? I, mean, I think a CPP is right. Um, so yeah, Contemporary Physics Education Project. And this is a poster that you might have seen elsewhere. And uh, it, it, it's, it's a summary of our uh, current knowledge of particle physics. And it's up to date enough to have included the Higgs boson that was discovered what, back in 2014, 2015. I mean, it's been predicted for decades, but it was finally detected <laughs> a few years ago. And um, and it's uh, it's uh, uh, produced for someone who doesn't have 
you, you know, produced for people who are not particle physicists. So it's a, a fair summary of particle physics. Now, for our purpose, a lot of what's here um, we don't need to get into, so we won't. Uh, other than to point out that this is the portion I'm talking about when I talk about leptons. Um, electron, it's the lightest lept uh, charged lepton, and muon and the tau are the other two leptons that are kind of like electron, except heavier. And uh, we have three flavors of neutrino, a fact which becomes important in a little bit. So, so um, in these few slides, I'm covering, I'm really trying to cover the, the nuclear physics vocabulary so that as we talk about um, some of these things that uh, you, you have a place to, uh, or you have a way to place them into context. Um, yeah, and though, uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> leave that there and try not to spend too much time here. Let's see. Um, yeah, and uh, this is on. Uh, this is why we have to do this primer and uh, give you examples. So, um, if you've taken chemistry before, this uh, um, notation might seem familiar. Uh, if not, uh, this is to a degree intuitive. You know, you have this arrow. So it looks like you are going from one place to the other place. And what this notation is showing is that these are the materials that you are starting with. And after some kind of a process that's not described in detail, this is what you end up with. And this is uh, most commonly used in chemistry class to describe chemical reactions. And you can also use this to describe nuclear reactions. And here, um, what you have is you have uh, two hydrogen atoms or two hydrogen nuclei that turn into, and this, uh, I guess it's a kind of a hydrogen, it still has less, but this number two indicates that it's a type of a hydrogen that's twice as heavy as a single hydrogen, it's called deuterium. And, um, and so the process for somehow this going into this, plus a positron and neutrino um, that describes some here, but I guess uh, at this point, what's important here is that this is a process that can happen and does happen in our sun. And uh, there are certain conditions that have to be met for this uh, process to occur. And that those conditions are met within the uh, core of a star like our sun. 